What's going on guys? Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with yet another quick Hackintosh tip for you. This video is going to cover the topic of graphics. Now when people are out there following my series, building their Hackintoshes, uh, one of the most common questions I get is would I be okay with just using the onboard graphics on my motherboard or should I spend the extra money and spring for a dedicated graphics card? This video will cover the pros and cons of each and maybe just answer that question of which one is right for you. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So before getting into the benefits of each, it's worth mentioning that not all processors and motherboards have onboard graphics. For example, my system is an X58 chipset and has a socket 1366 Core i7. My system does not have any onboard graphics at all. So as you can see the back of my computer here, it has everything else. It has Firewire, USB, it has all the audio, but there is no graphics anywhere to be found. So if you're in sort of in my boat and you have a system like mine, or maybe you're just referencing my parts because you know they work and you built that exact system, you do need a graphics card. Another CPU socket that does not have onboard graphics support is LGA2011. Now at this time, I don't believe there's any compatible parts with the Hackintosh. I mean, you could probably get some things to work, but it probably wouldn't even be worth it. So at this point, I don't believe LGA2011 is supported at all, but I don't, also I don't believe that there's any of those boards that have onboard graphics. I was also searching around and there's some socket 1155, Core i5s, uh, even I think Core i7s that don't have onboard graphics. So when you're searching around for your processors and your motherboard, make sure that they both have onboard graphics. And with the processor, make sure that it has the Intel HD 3000 graphics. If you get one that has HD 2000, onboard will not work and your only option will be to get a dedicated GPU. Now with Ivy Bridge, they actually introduced HD 4000, which you can get working. At this point, I believe Chimera does support it or will support it in the next release. So that does work, but as of right now, at the recording of this video, things will change in the very, very near future. Probably actually sometime this week. But for now, it's not officially supported. But if you're looking to build an Ivy Bridge system, make sure you get a processor. I think they all do, but make sure you get one that has HD 4000. So now, what are the benefits of having a dedicated graphics card? The first one is probably the most obvious, is that you'll get much better performance. So if you're someone like me that runs multiple monitors, or you do 1080p video editing multiple times per week, you do heavy multitasking, then you're going to want a dedicated graphics card. But if you're someone that just has one 20-inch monitor, and you just want to use Safari and iTunes, there's absolutely no need to have a, a full dedicated graphics card. So for that, you'd probably be okay with onboard graphics. But like I said, if you're someone like me that wants even, I would I would say two monitors and just does some mild video editing or even games or anything like that then you will definitely want a graphics card because the onboard graphics will not give you very good performance. Dedicated graphics cards will also typically give you more display options. For example, many onboard solutions really only have DVI and VGA. While HDMI is becoming a little more standard now, pretty much all I would say mid to upper range GPUs have HDMI on board. A lot of them have display ports now, multiple DVIs, so you'll have many more display options that fit the monitors you have. So now that we have the benefits out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about which onboard ports work. Now this is going to be pretty generalized because these things could change based on DSDT edits, based on motherboard and processor. Uh, they're all different and they're always changing, but as a general rule, this video is going to be based on a supported motherboard that's in the DSDT database that is using a DSDT from the Tony Mac database. So in my research, I found that DVI works. It's very plug and play. You just take your DVI cable, plug it in, and you will have graphics. DVI also supports the graphics enabler set to yes function. So that means that things like DVD player and Geekbench will work, and you'll just have overall the best performance. Moving on to VGA. VGA is very old. VGA is analog. VGA is probably the most common connection simply because it's so old, but I would not count on it working with the Hackintosh. I don't think that real Macs have actually even supported VGA for many years. So, I mean, even if you could get it working, I really don't know why, because all modern parts have moved on from VGA. Now, HDMI. HDMI is where things get sort of complicated, because I do believe there are some kernel extensions out there that allow it. Like I said, I haven't really tested this because my, my system doesn't have onboard graphics. But you can, however, get HDMI working with graphics enablers set to no in your boot.p list, which isn't really something you want. You'll probably end up getting a very bad resolution. So I really wouldn't recommend HDMI on board. But I, like I said, I do believe there are ways to get it working, but I just don't know them on hand. That's something you want to ask in the Tony Mac forums. So basically what I'm saying here is if you want to use onboard graphics, if you don't want to go out and spend extra money on a dedicated graphics card, you're going to want to get a processor that has HD3000 graphics, and you're also going to want to get a motherboard that has DVI out, because that's pretty much the only way that you'll get pretty good onboard graphics performance. So now, which ports work on dedicated graphics cards? 
this question is just way too generic because it really does vary from card to card, from manufacturer to manufacturer. Uh, XFX 6850 and a Gigabyte 6850, while they're like the same chipset, just because they're a different manufacturer, things are different. But I will say the two graphics cards I recommend the most are the Gigabyte AMD Radeon HD 6850 and the Gigabyte AMD Radeon HD 6870. Those two cards, they have uh, pretty good display options. They work out of the box great. You don't have to force a frame buffer in the boot.p list or anything. They do just work extremely well. And for example, the 6870 is what's in use right behind me here, driving three monitors with full graphics acceleration, handles things perfectly. So those are my two suggestions if you're looking to get a dedicated GPU. At this point in time, any of the AMD Radeon HD 7000 series graphics cards are not supported, so don't even ask. Uh, those probably will be supported probably within like the next couple months to a year or so, but at the time of this video, they are not supported. I know there's many other cards out there, especially on the NVIDIA side, that work great if there are, and I just don't know about them. Go ahead and post them below, help people out, and help them choose which, which side they want. Personally, I recommend AMD cards simply because they work very well with Graphics Enabler, but NVIDIA cards also do work as well. So that's all I have for this video. I hope it helps you guys out there that are trying to decide whether you simply want onboard graphics or to go with a dedicated GPU. Now hopefully you guys know a little bit more about that and can make that decision. So thank you guys very much for watching. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and at RoachTechnology on Twitter. I'm currently uh, doing a giveaway that actually ends this Friday, July 27th. So go ahead and check out the link in the description. And I'll see you guys in my next video.